recording. I think we get going right now. Hi, everybody. I want to uh, welcome you uh, to our second uh, Coastal Georgia Tourism discussion. Uh, my name is Brian Flick. I'm the Associate Marine Extension Director with UGA's Marine Extension and Georgia Sea Grant Program. Um, as you can imagine, with any type of program like this, uh, multiple uh, entities are involved. So um, certainly want to uh, acknowledge uh, Troy University, Explore Georgia, Argrove International, uh, as well as our other public service and outreach units at UGA. So uh, Carl Vincent Institute of Government, as well as Archway Partnership. Um, in fact, you'll be interacting with several of these individuals uh, throughout the program. Um, just a little bit of background, uh, how we got here. Uh, hopefully, um, many of you had a chance to participate in the 2019 uh, Coastal Georgia Tourism Conference that we had in Savannah. Um, we had about 100 people representing different segments of our coastal tourism industry, uh, really as a way of, of networking and addressing current issues and trying to figure out how we can improve collaboration to, to um, help sustain our, our tourism industry as well as protect our, our cultural natural resources. Um, we had a uh, conference scheduled, of course, in spring and COVID had uh, other plans for us. And originally we had talked about uh, doing a virtual conference um, in the fall, but we decided to go this route uh, really to serve as a platform, a springboard uh, to continue conversations related to some of the, the tourism pillars that are identified in our state's uh, Department of Economic Development's uh, tour, uh, tourism strategic plan. So last week we had the outdoor recreation sports. This week obviously is Georgia Grown uh, Food and Drink. And next week uh, we'll be uh, discussing African American heritage and culture. Um, but we realized, you know, it's a short time frame and we really just wanted to use this to continue momentum so that hopefully in April, uh, when we hope we can have the a conference again, uh, we'll have some good information for us to move forward. So um, I really appreciate everybody uh, coming today. This is going to be recorded and we will send out uh, links once we have everything, uh, once we uh, do closed captioning and we'll share the notes as well. Um, but I'm really excited. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, um, Sarah Lynn Stafford, uh, who's also uh, been key in, in presenting this or getting this together. Um, and just to give you a rundown of how we're going to go about doing the discussions. So I'm going to turn it over to Sarah Lynn. Thanks, Brian. Good morning, everybody. It sure is good to be here with you, even if I can't see you in person. Um, so this morning, we're going to start off with some time for Q&A with our special session presenter, uh, Cheryl Smith, and Brian will introduce her in just a few minutes. Really wanted to start off by just to add an opportunity to watch the pre-recorded session. And so we put up a really quick, just a yes or no, just to give us an idea. Great, looking good here. Okay, um, so after we just wanted to get an idea on that because Cheryl is here and Brian will um, ask her to cover a few points, but we also want to encourage you if you have any questions for her after having seen the presentation, if you would send them in a chat and we'll make sure that she gets asked. After Cheryl has an opportunity for Q&A and we kind of cover the topic a little bit, we're going to be assigned into three different breakout rooms and Samuel, who is our behind the scenes expert today, will send us into three different breakouts and we will discuss some questions, get some input, uh, have an opportunity to uh, talk to each other, and then we'll come back in and do some report outs about this topic. And then we'll be ab able to uh, say goodbye for the day. So I'll turn it back over to Brian now. Thanks, Carolyn. Yeah, and I do also want to mention the pre-recorded presentation um, that, that Cheryl gave, as well as our other speakers for the two other topics, uh, those will also be shared with everybody. Um, so at the end of the day, when we're done with these discussions, we'll have a whole package of uh, presentations, notes, and the, the discussion. So I uh, just want to make people aware of that. So I am uh, excited to introduce Cheryl Smith, who uh, was the speaker of, of the presentation. Uh, she's the agritourism manager, manager for the Georgia Department of Agriculture. And she's been in that position since uh, 2019. Um, but certainly no stranger to tourism in Georgia as she worked uh, with the Department of Economic Development's uh, tourism program 
um, since 1998 before that um, up in the northwest region of the state. So has a, uh, Cheryl has a long history of working in tourism and connecting communities to its resources. Um, so as Sarah Lynn said, what we'd like to do is um, if we have some questions to put them in the chat and I'll moderate this. But um, I, I'll start off and just asking um, Cheryl if you could, um, for those who had not seen the presentation and you covered a lot of things about just in general, you know, trends that we're seeing with food and drink and what the Georgia Grown program is, but can you maybe share uh, what you see is what were some of the key takeaway points from your presentation? Uh, well, I think there, there are three things that, that I really think are really important. One is the Georgia Grown program that is um, the marketing and development uh, program for the Department of Agriculture. It is multifaceted, has a lot of um, uh, assets to it. Uh, one of them is the agritourism manager, um, but the Georgia Grown program encompasses everybody in agriculture. And whether you think it or not, agritourism connects to just plain old farmers, food processors, a lot of the other people who are members of Georgia Grown. And since I have come on board, I'm really trying to beef up the agritourism aspect. We've added new categories to the website, georgiagrown.com. And I think that, you know, as more people realize that that's a really good place to go to find information about agritourism uh, attractions and lodging, it, it, um, it, uh, we, and we do a lot of marketing to promote that um, online, social media, as well as advertising, paid advertising, as well as we go to a lot of trade and travel shows. One of the biggest things we have is our annual publication. Uh, it's the Georgia Grown Magazine. It usually comes out in, in September, in October at the Georgia National Fair. Um, and in the back of that is a Georgia Grown Guide. We have it divided into two sections. One is agritourism sites and one is um, shoppers guide. That's food processors, people who, who have uh, items to sell made from Georgia Grown um, items. So that Georgia Grown program is, is really, I think, a robust program and a lot of people don't know about it, but uh, we work on it every day to try to get people uh, to understand that. Within that program is the agritourism signage program. And that is, um, there's fees attached to that. But basically, if you drive around the state, you'll see these three foot by three foot signs that say Georgia Grown Agritourism on it. And those um, are, I work with the DOT and individual um, agritourism sites to get them installed. And like I said, there is, there's fees associated with it. If anybody's interested in the program, I can send them an overview and an application. Um, and then the, the third thing I think that is important are the Georgia uh, Grown Trails. The, you, you've got um, four that are, are, three that are really active. The fourth, which is Highway 17, which is there, but I don't know how robust it is. And um, I think that uh, recently, well, I know recently, uh, LEM, which is the uh, company that kind of works with all the trails on their marketing uh, materials and such, they uh, created an app. And if you haven't downloaded it, you should, and it will show you the different trails. Um, I think 17 has 22 people where, uh, or 22 businesses, where the others have around 30 to 35, maybe 40. So those are the three things I think that are really important resources for uh, anyone that is trying to um, develop or enhance their agritourism product or business. And I know, and I appreciate that. I know right before we go into our breakout groups, um, Patrick Holliday, who was part of our steering committee uh, with uh, Troy University, he's going to say a few words about Highway 17 because that is something that we do want to address in, in the breakout groups. Um, so we'll get to, to Patrick here in a minute. But uh, Cheryl, can you also, you know, one of the things I will bring up during your presentation, you talked about how COVID, uh, when it came to uh, Georgia Ground Food and Drink, um, has had an impact. And you, you particularly talked about wineries and breweries and muteries. Can you talk a little bit about some of the 
I guess, challenges and opportunities with, with food and, and drink that you've seen over the past year and how that might, uh, you know, how it is impacting our coast or how that might be an opportunity? I think uh, the biggest challenge is when they, um, when the local governments, state governments want to close down the restaurants. That's probably the biggest challenge. But what I've seen in Georgia is that, you know, we, we have a governor who has tried to balance opening up and also being uh, responsible as far as COVID restrictions. Um, some of the opportunities with, with the wineries and the breweries and the distilleries, they have really looked at this and done a really good job of People want to go out and socialize, but they, the wineries especially, have had one of the best years they've had ever because people were anxious to get out. So what they did was they just, you know, most of them have really nice vineyards, so they encouraged people to spread out, and they altered a lot of the things that they did in order to enhance social distancing. So, and they did, did a lot of curbside pickup, and there was uh, a couple wineries that did um, uh, slushies to go. <laughs> so, uh, I'm in fact, I was a, a I bought bought some slushies to go one that one time. But um, and and the and the restaurants they're doing a really good job of of spreading out and and eat outside eating outside. A lot of them have tents now and they have spread out. Um, one of the things that I was reading about was, or I know that. I have been doing a lot of reading is that people are using more RVs and camping more because they feel safer and they get out. And I've got an article in my upcoming um, ag uh, update that talks about uh, creative lodging and camping opportunities for on farms. And so I think what people need to do is get a little bit creative as to, you know, what they can do on their farm to encourage people to either primitive camp or to, you know, create something. Um, yurts are real popular. Um, there's a lot of interesting um, uh, ways to encourage lodging on farmland. And one of them is like Bear Claw up in Ella, they're in, Fanning County, they have uh, tree houses. They built tree houses. So you can go to the tree house and spend the night. You can go to the winery, social distance, and you can enjoy the outdoors um, at, at the vineyard. So I think that, that people need to look and be creative out of the box and, and keep in mind social distancing and, and that kind of thing with what they're doing. And, and I appreciate bringing that point up because even last week during our discussion, George Duesenberry, you know, made the comment, even though the focus was outdoor recreation, these, these pillars don't act in isolation. So you're talking about the RVing and moving and, you know, we've got a great network of state, state and federal parks uh, to, to travel to and then being able to utilize or, or take advantage of, of the food and drink resources as well. Um, we did have a question about the LM, the LEM app that you mentioned. Is there a link? for it or a name specifically that someone can search? You can go on Google or, let me see, Google, is it uh, Android or the, the iP iPhone okay. app store? You can go to either one of those and look for Georgia Grown Trails. I believe it's easy. I, I downloaded it. You just go to the Georgia Grown Trails. Right, yep, okay. And then uh, Tracy from Explore Georgia, thanks. I saw that she also said she found two apps useful for camping on farms. Um, and really, uh, she's putting that in the, the chat. And, you know, again, one of the key aspects of these discussions and hopefully moving it forward when we have our conference is trying to make these connections in our community. So whether it's coming from the state or, or private entities. Um, another question I did have. Uh, so any thoughts about safe tourism once the weather starts getting colder? Uh, the winter months seem like the, they'll be harder to encourage outdoor activities. And I know we, you know, especially we're talking about, you know, you mentioned the, the wineries and stuff. So just any thoughts on that particular? Well, I have, uh, there's a, there's a um, uh, herb farm up in North Georgia in Blairsville, and she's been doing uh, indoor workshops and they social distance inside. She's got them spread out and they have different workstations. Like if they're making soap or putting together some kind of, uh, uh, end product 
with their herbs, like an, a wreath or something. But she has, I mean, she's been booked solid and she has managed to be social distancing inside. So I think that, like I said, you just got to be a little creative with what you're doing um, and think about, you know, six feet apart, you know, wearing masks, but you can still do things inside that you could do outside um, throughout the winter months. And I think y'all are uh, especially in a good position on the coast because your weather is much better in the winter time than in maybe North Georgia. So you can do a few more things outside than, than, um, than they probably could up, up north. Um, but you know, that's, I think just keep in mind creativity, um, it, it's not impossible and, and, and network. See who else is doing something out there that's similar or that uh, maybe in another part of the country. Uh, a lot of people, you know, I spend a, send a, not a fair amount of time, but I, I check out what's going on in other parts of the country to see, you know, how we could do things better and what I can take from what somebody else is doing and maybe not exactly, but manipulate it so that it works for me. Gotcha. And, and one thing I will say, you know, you talk about the connection and we are capturing the notes because I see multiple people sharing links of like farm stays. And then just, I see Colby's message about South Georgia being a great spot. Um, you know, and then, you know, there's cold weather activities, but you know, Colby being on here again, I know we talked about our state parks. And so just connecting that to when people do go to these food and drink, um, opportunities. One other thing, you know, you mentioned, obviously, since the focus here is on the coast, and first thing a lot of times people think of is, is our seafood, which draws a lot of people. So when, you know, with Georgia Grown, can you sh share a little um, input about that? It doesn't just have to be land-based agriculture, correct, when we talk about Georgia Grown? That's true. We recently, um, Georgia Grown did a video about, I think it was an oyster farm. Um, and I, you know, I'm not that familiar with a lot of things that go on down on the, on the coast, but yeah, I mean, anytime you could, you can incorporate what's local, what's culturally local, what's historically local. And that is what, what y'all are well known for. People go to the coast to get fresh seafood. And I think that if you, people need to network and, and look at opportunities that are there and say, okay, well, there's a, a shrimp farmer or someone who brings in shrimp daily, what can I do to enhance what I have and work with that shrimp farmer? Or um, well, one of the things that, that they did up in Rabin County is they did farm tours. They, um, the, the local DMO put together these farm tours and some of them were um, restaurants, some of them were, uh, you know, like a local garden where, you know, you, it may be a local garden, but if you go visit and they talk about things, you learn something. And that's part of the tourism experience is to take something somebody's learned and, and go back home and say, hey, we can do this or this is, this would be fun to do. So, you know, farm tours are something that, you know, with regard to seafood, you know, you could put together a, a great, um, either countywide, multi-county, or even incorporated into the Highway 17 Georgia Grown Trail. Um, you just have to look and, and kind of be creative. That, that is probably the biggest word, or two words, is networking and being creative. Um, and I'm really good on, you know, if I have an example, I can, if I go to a farm, I can think of all sorts of things that you can do. So, you know, if you want me to come down at some point and say, okay, well, this is what you could do, or that's what you could do. That's a lot easier for me than just sitting back and saying, okay, hypothetically, this is what you can do. No, yeah, and, and those are great points. And in particular, I know, you know, there has been a lot of discussion with the, the potential growth of our, the new oyster aquaculture industry. And I know there has been some chat about potential, uh, you know, corporations for trails. And that, and that is something I think during our breakout groups, we can continue talking about. Um, and so I'm glad you bring that up. Uh, there was one question about, you know, you also mentioned the presentation. Can you highlight a little bit more about the networking, uh, but the extension uh, and Department of Ag, cooperative extension and Department of Ag created a, a website to actually help people locate local foods. Can you talk a little bit about that website? And, and um, like I said, I know it was not just ag, but it was seafood products as well. Was, uh, okay, okay, I'm, 
Are you not talking about the Georgia uh, Farm Bureau uh, farm? I, you know, I think you're right. I'm sorry, I said Department of Ag. But yeah, I know that they're, during the, during COVID is trying to help people connect to local food sources. Yeah. You oh, okay. No, no. UGA has a website that uh, you can uh, link that you can submit your uh, location to, and we work with them to collaborate on, on that. And I think the link is in the program, I mean, in my presentation. So uh, anybody can do that. And, and that was something that, that UGA um, uh, initiated and we just kind of you know, put our rubber stamp on it and, and uh, shared it with folks to, to let them know that they could be a part of that. So that's another way that people can get the word out about their agritourism, agricultural uh, uh, entity. But also there is the Georgia Farm Bureau, they have a farm uh, passport. And if you're, it doesn't matter whether you're seafood or whether you're, you know, a vegetable farmer or you're a fruit farmer, olive farmer or what, you can be on that passport and it's a yearly thing that they do. Um, and, and, and from what I understand, it's very, very popular. Right, thanks. And, you know, just some of the comments, it's, it's from, uh, I like how Tracy get, describes herself as a gearhead. I like that. But the idea about our going back with the weather and, you know, even that when we're purchasing these products too, you know, Obviously, it's not only just for the experience of, of the great food and culture we have, but economically, this supports our local communities, too. So this is one of those aspects. It's, it's not just the, the good feelings and, and the camaraderie, but it, it is also, you know, part of a, a way of, of driving our economy. Um, then there was just some other comments, too, about, you know, we mentioned about the seafood piece. Um, and there was a comment about an uh, airboat tour of uh, clam uh, a clam operation. Uh, Charlie Phillips is one, uh, one of the clam growers on Georgia and I know he, I don't think he's commercially doing it yet, but that is something, you know, this idea of, of farm tours, which you have seen in other states. So you certainly have, as those um, certain types of aquaculture industries have built up, you have seen some of that, some of the type of those tours as well. Uh, comment from Colby, just branding. Uh, again, this one's about oysters, but Apalachicola, so yeah, Georgia itself, you know, it's a, a branding opportunity when we look at our products, whether it's Vidalia onions or, or, or white shrimp. So uh, good opportunities there too. Um, and uh, Sarah Lynn, I appreciate, she put in the Farm Bureau passports. And again, we're gonna share all these links because I see Patrick putting several of these, uh, the UGA extension uh, product connection as well. So I appreciate everybody continuing to add that. And then Tracy also added some additional information about the, G, um, the passport. So, Brian, yeah. th there's a couple things I wanted to mention. One is um, there's a, a restaurant in North Georgia called Sawmill up in Blairsville, and they started out as a, uh, they are a farm to table uh, restaurant. They are, they have a chalkboard and they tell you where their food comes from. And the neat thing about that is that, I mean, it's packed all the time and it's as clean as it can be. But the thing that I, I, want to bring out is that because they were so successful with the restaurant part of uh, their operation, they opened up a retail sales uh, portion right next door with all Georgia grown and a lot of it is from the farmers and the food pro and the processors that are local and so you can not only eat local but you can buy local and that supports a broader uh, agricultural um, uh, economic base. The other thing I was thinking is that if you've got a restaurant and maybe they're not doing farm to table, but maybe a local shrimper could go to him and say, okay, listen, I want you to create a signature dish with my shrimp or my citrus or my oysters. And that way you can promote local at a restaurant, maybe that's not necessarily doing farm to table completely, but encourage them to do farm to table, but give them the, the, the impetus to create a signature dish and people will go to a restaurant just for that signature dish if it's good enough. So then you create a, a desire for people to travel to that area and then that just multiplies and spreads out even further. And there's no doubt we have some amazing chefs on this coast in the entire state that we're fortunate at. So yeah, and, and again, one of the key pieces of these discussions when we get into breakout groups is identifying those partnerships where some might already exist, but ways to enhance you know, existing partnerships 
and are there opportunities for new ones? And I, and, and I appreciate you giving those examples because I think those are perfect opportunities. Um, so we've got time for uh, maybe one or two more questions. And again, right before we go into breakout groups, I'm gonna actually turn this over to Patrick uh, Holiday just to give a little update about the Highway 17 Trail, just to give a little bit more context in case some of the uh, people on the, on the call are not as familiar. But uh, just wanted to make sure there, if there were any other questions um, for um, uh, Cheryl, I do want to, if I didn't already say this too, her contact information is in her presentation and when we send out these notes, um, because we are fortunate, whether it's through Explore Georgia, the Department of Ag, we have great state agency resources, DNR at the State Parks or Coastal Resources Division. Um, you know, we have these resources on the coast or up in other parts of the state that um, they're there to actually help serve our tourism community and it's trying to find ways to maximize those partnerships. All right, so I tell you what, well, if, uh, sure, I just wanted to give you, just, if there was one last thing you wanted to say, uh, I just want to give you that opportunity. Uh, well, I will say that people travel for what's in that area. They're, they travel for local history, local culture, um, and people do travel for food and drink. Um, take advantage of, of your wineries, your breweries, distilleries, um, and, and work with them, network, cre you, know, you know, create something between the, your farmers and, and, and your food and your processors. If you've got somebody that makes a wonderful chow chow, maybe work with them to, if you're a restaurant, you know, make sure that uh, you work with them and create that dish that's that local chow chow. Um, People, people travel for food and, and that's, I mean, an agriculture and, and learning, taking something back. One of the things that people are doing now is, you know, because of COVID-19, they are, more and more people are having chickens at home. So if you've got a farm that has chickens, then, you know, you can teach people how to raise chickens, how to, you know, you know deal with eggs and then, you know, sell them chickens. I mean, think about ways that you can use what you know and, and share it and hopefully create some kind of commerce from that. Perfect. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate the time you've, you've put and given this presentation and hopefully you get to, to stick around and, and hear some of the discussion points and that creativity and education. It's, it's actually a nice little segue because I do want to introduce uh, Dr. Patrick Holliday, uh, who is a tourism researcher with Troy University here in Brunswick and has done a lot with agritourism. And he was just going to give a, a brief little update about um, Highway 17, uh, Georgia Grown Trail that uh, Cheryl mentioned, just to provide a little bit more context when we go into the groups. So um, I guess, uh, stay, there we go. Patrick, you are unmuted, so go for it. All right, thanks, Brian. Uh, and thank you, Cheryl. Always great to hear from you. Um, yeah, like Brian said, I, I'm a professor of tourism management at Troy University. I'm also the president of the Coastal Georgia Travel Association. I'm on the board of directors of Georgia Grown Trail 17. It was started in 2018 with a piece of legislation that Jeff Jones, our local uh, state house representative in this part of the coast, uh, pushed through. And then in 2019, we put together a team, had our first board of directors, started identifying all of our sites from farms to ranches to aquaculture operations, restaurants, hotels, even museums, anything that was Georgia grown had an agricultural component to it. Um, so then COVID happened, things got slowed down, but we're pushing through. And the reason I'm here is just to say that if you would like to become involved with Georgia grown trail 17, um, want to be part of some of our committees, potentially be on the board of directors, or if you know a site um, that fits our criteria, or just want any other information, reach out to me. Um, I'm putting my email there in the chat, and I'm sure Brian will have this included in the notes too, but yeah, um, we're looking forward to working with you and really need the support from all of our partners up and down the coast. So I look forward to hearing from you, thanks. Thanks, Patrick, appreciate that. And, and that really does kind of lend us into, as we're about to go into breakout groups, um, Sam, who's kind of controlling that, will we'll shortly uh, divvy us up. 
Um, and that is a question that, you know, we, we do want to hear from the group about, you know, are you interested um, in, in being a part of that? And, you know, also how, you know, how, what are ways that we can enhance that? Because Highway 17, we've got the spine here on the coast to really uh, benefit. And, and again, not just from food and grown, but, you know, when we talk about the outdoor recreation and African-American heritage culture and these other discussions, they all do link with one another. Um, so I really do appreciate the discussion here. Um, and yep, someone just, uh, Tracy who explored Georgia just put a link to that Highway 17 trail. So I appreciate that. And again, we can discuss a little bit more of that in the breakout groups. Um, so I think at that point, uh, I think Sam's gonna start doing his uh, magic there um, and you'll shortly go. All right, everybody should have received an invite to a breakout room. So I think folks are heading there, but if you have any trouble finding it, just let me know. Um, and Cheryl, would, would you like to go to a breakout room? But uh, I didn't put you in one, but you are certainly welcome to. Um, yeah, you can put me in, and I may have to leave, but you can put me in one. And yeah, well, I see that we still have, I know we still have some people uh, in their breakout groups. So I think we might be waiting until the last second. So we'll get everybody here shortly and we'll just do a recap of, of our three groups and hopefully it'll be a good opportunity to, to further discuss some of this information. All right, looks like we are all back. And so I appreciate everybody. Hopefully we had some good discussions in each of the sessions. Um, I'm really pleased with, with what I heard in our groups. Um, with that being said, this is just an opportunity in the last uh, uh, 15 minutes or so to just to highlight uh, what some of our, or what we talked about. Uh, we don't necessarily have to hit every single point, but um, it would be great from each of the three uh, groups, so Michelle's group and Sarah Lynn's group, um, to, sh to share some of the notes, uh, you know, what were some of the key pieces? And then if we have some time for some discussion, uh, we can wrap up with that. So um, it looks like I've got Sarah Lynn and, and Courtney's group up there first. Um, okay. So. Okay, very good. Um, so we just started off, of course, asking the question about, um, are you interested in learning more and possibly being involved? And we had a consensus that yes. There was definitely interest in that. Um, we started talking about how we might be involved. And I think that one of the things that we came to with our stickies here is really um, be prepared to talk about candidates that should be involved with the trail and kind of do our own exploration of the existing trails to see what kinds of businesses we're generally involved in the agritourism trail and become prepared to talk about the possibilities in our region that would be good candidates. Um, I think we had a, a guest from Hawkinsville, uh, Cherie, who said that the 341 trail that comes through there is very active in, and that they're working with Hardy Farm peanuts right now because it's peanut season. And so finding ways to highlight things that are going on in the region that for partnerships could be put together. Um, she also mentioned that there's a wedding venue over there that is a part of the trail. And so I know there's a lot of wedding venues along the coast. So that's an opportunity for us to look at. Um, anybody else was in the group want to talk about some of the other things that we, we said? Well, since nobody's jumped right in, I will introduce Sarah Ann. 
Um, Brian just said hello to her uh, when we came back into the main session. But those of you who have worked before with Cheryl Hargroves, she's gone back into uh, private consulting and Sarah Ann Rhodes is taking her place in a, in a huge whole state role right now. Sarah Ann, would you like yeah. to just um, tell so everybody what you're doing? Cheryl Hargrove and myself. Um, she's jumped in, back into consulting. And so um, I'm kind of covering the entire state. Um, trying to fill the very big shoes that she had, just um, trying to learn more about the coast. So I wanted to kind of get in and get involved. Um, so if you have any questions or anything I can assist with, um, please hit me over the head with them so that I can help get up to speed. Um, but yeah, we're, uh, I know Tracy can attest to this. The Explore Georgia team is always evolving and learning and just trying to be in as many places as possible. Um, which virtual is great because we're able to do that, but um, also down the line, want to be able to meet y'all in person as well. So, and come have some seafood and go on a, a bike ride with Tracy down there and maybe get a beer and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. We look forward to that too. <laughs> <laughs> and we have you recorded uh, trying to hit you over the head for information. So Yeah, uh, no, it's cool. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I'll leave this section with saying that everybody there committed to another session to get together and bring these ideas and and talk about doing more with the trail and so then we moved over to what other food and drink ideas might lend themselves to collaborative efforts um amara would you mind talking about this one the the home versions of georgia recipes and the cookbook idea sure no problem so I suggested that uh, we not just focus on foreign tourism, but on domestic tourism as well, and reminding people that they live in a great place. Um, and with that, we could possibly do uh, maybe famous recipes from Georgia, or even look at uh, recipes that come from some of the restaurants along the trail and put them together either online or in a cookbook, however, and have people be able to access those. And not only do they get to bring a bit of that uh, space home with them, but maybe they can go back and visit the restaurant and see how theirs uh, compares to the restaurant. And so we, we went off and started talking a lot about different kinds of food things we can do in that way. And I know Sarah Ann talked about um, having sustainable uh, food making competitions maybe for to get the youth engaged or even outside of that just having community engagement and we also talked about um, pairing that with um, some of the cultural heritage and partnerships that could happen with Georgia and South Carolina in terms of the Gullah Geechee and then I know Cherie she uh, discussed having uh, local beer nights at you know some of these uh, venues and maybe that way we can encourage collaboration with um, the restaurants and the local breweries and everyone can pitch in you can come in and uh, donate to us uh, to a cause and you get to enjoy local beer local food and a lot comes out of that thank you um, as you can see uh, Amer is a great resource for good ideas and also so having Sarah Ann on was wonderful and Cherie. And one of the other things that we ended up talking about was um, trying to be sure and highlight seasonal opportunities for seasonal foods that might be coming in now. Um, even the beverages that breweries might have up because they, who's, somebody might be doing pumpkin beer. But um, making that information available either through the Highway 17 Trail website or maybe through some shopper's guides, um, promoting local produce and local uh, wineries or beer, kind of along the lines of the Marine Extension webinar not too long ago, featuring seafood recipes and then pairing them up with the right kind of beer or wine. Thought that might be a, a good idea. Um, I think that promoting ourselves, so as Amara said, not just for outside people to come in, but promoting what we do within our own communities um, and be sure and promote outdoor dining options to help those restaurants that have those. Let's kind of go back to the safety that's about aspect. It. Did I miss anything? 
Okay, Sarian gave me an okay. I, we covered everything. Thank you. Thank you for covering. Yeah, I, I realize the danger of doing a discussion about uh, food and drink and beer right before lunch is probably, uh, my stomach is uh, growling. So uh, great discussion points and appreciate yeah. that. So uh, Michelle, would you or someone from your group like to highlight what you discussed? I volunteered. Wow, Patrick, thanks. Yeah, professional talker. So, um, and also, uh, Nice to meet you, Sarah Ann. I, Cheryl and I did lots and lots together, so um, good to to see that you're stepping into that role. Uh, we spent a lot of our time, we spent our entire, we had a really rich discussion with our group, so we stayed on the involvement piece. Um, so one of the things that we talked about is that the trail is designed to pull people away from Interstate I-95 and our main um, hubs like Savannah, St. Simons, and to some extent St. Mary's, the people are going to Cumberland Island and pull them out into the rural areas so that they could participate in these tourism economies. Um, and then we also had uh, Jill from DNR was there. We're talking a lot about grants, uh, grant opportunities, technical resources, um, and, and potential funding for, for projects and things like that. Um, some of the farms that want to participate, for example, um, are not visitor ready. So there's, there's some opportunities for that. And then we talked about knowledge sharing, having knowledge sharing platform. Um, of course, we have to keep in mind what COVID is, is happening um, and it's not going away. It seems to be accelerating in some places. So what we think about as crisis, as opportunity, we know that some farmers have done some really, um, really innovative pivots, moving from direct to restaurant to direct to consumer, uh, selling their wares online or at, uh, parking lot pickups and things like that. And so when we do have these things that, that happen, be it an economic downturn or a pandemic or whatever it may be, how do we navigate that by building in resilience as part of sustainability? And so this is part of the educational piece. We also wanted to have community input um, and, and community engagement so that there's some long-term implications because we all know that if, if any project is going to be successful as a community-based socioeconomic development tool, then it needs to be community-driven. We also want to encourage transparency so that community members feel completely engaged. You know, we're working with farmers and ranchers and, and fishermen. Um, so they are definitely a group of people that have their own understanding of how their operations work, their own mindsets, and they wanna be heard. And um, we need to make sure that the community comes first and that our ideas are in support of theirs. So that creates this vision. We also want to make sure, you know, we had uh, a lot of discussion about farms as places that can also promote environmental stewardship, ecosystem services, enhancing biodiversity. All of these things can be inherently part of what farms do. So not only are they farms that are interesting for the, for the products that they're developing and um, a destination for visitors, but at the same time, they can be um, co-creating these, these resource opportunities. And then, um, I don't have my reading glasses on. What does that say? Embracing diversity. Okay. Um, embracing, yes, like it was really little. Uh, so, yeah, so one of the things, it's particularly because Highway 17 and the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor occupy the same geography, um, we have... Um, to be really mindful of creating a diverse and inclusive um, set of partners in this project. And then again, um, finding a way to engage that, that community was repeated because it really needs to be first when we're talking about community development tools. I'll, I'll go ahead and jump in a minute. Patrick, you did a great job reporting back um, all the conversations we had. Um, so on the surface, how might you be able to get involved? A lot of these don't seem like they are answers to that question, but I thought one of the nice features of our group was there was a lot of experience in terms of community engagement, a lot of technical resources, 
um, a lot of university skills to put the planning piece and the community engagement piece and and some of these other other activities together. So this is really how the members of this group personally can be involved in this process. And I think they bring a lot to the table. So it was a lot of fun to work with them. Um, we didn't get to question two, but I think we did a really good job on question one. So thanks for letting me work with the group. Yeah, Michelle, that's great. I appreciate that, that input. And, and it seems like, you know, based off what Patrick has, has added to what Sarah Lynn, I mean, it, it, definitely seen some themes there with with the partnerships and it's interesting the one comment for our group too just you know we have a lot of assets and resources and, and I think that's important it's just um, one of the main things um, from our group and, and I'm gonna let please jump in guys if, if I miss something but we talked about that importance of the champions for it because I think everyone said yes this is a great opportunity but at the end of the day, you know, who's going to not only, you know, manage it, but sustain it for, for long term. And, um, you know, I think we, one of the things we talked about are having influencers uh, and just kind of looking at existing trails, um, the, especially when it comes to social media, particularly with video, we talked about the importance of that. Um, and I think Tracy was the one who made the comment, if you're lucky enough and you have one of those, you know, know somebody that's influencers, um, you know, more power, but, you know, in some cases, uh, you know, Cole made the point that even with the state parks, um, they've contracted uh, with people to help. And, and it really is about telling the story. Um, I know the Liberty County CVB mentioned about um, blogs that they've done about food and drink and, um, you know, using those local resources as a, as a means of showcasing what we have on here. And so it really kept, we even got into the conversation about branding, um, how important that is. And I think Patrick made that comment about Highway 17. It's kind of the the real, you know, Georgia, you know, not that 95 is not, but, you know, for people who really want those authentic experiences, and we do, I mean, we've got that connection between the, the, the Georgia grown food and drink and the outdoor and the African American heritage and culture. Um, but it was brought up that then it kind of circles back to the influencers. Um, so someone made a comment about, you know, oh, get Garden and Gun to write a story. And um, I thought it was an interesting point. We talked about itineraries. Um, saying that, yeah, that's, you know, that's a lot of times that has been done, but again, that's where the influencers who maybe participate in those itineraries are really going to be a key factor uh, of being able to, to showcase um, that. Um, anyone from my group, that just as far as the Highway 17 uh, component, is there anything you'd like to add to that? We just sum it up saying it's storytelling, right? Getting the word out, letting people know how great this, this corridor is, storytelling. All right. Um, one of the things, Brian, that I, I didn't cover but was on our, our board was um, our group had mentioned something similar in maybe trying to get Food Network to come and do um, something along the coast to feature coastal recipes, coastal cooks, chefs competition, something of that nature. And, and, and kind of along that point, um, Hunter, again, talking about Liberty County, about some of the programs that they've done where you know they've had local food producers send them ingredients and then they do the cooking and have people um, uh, judge and again it's a great way of promoting what we have so we, we do have a lot of, of, of rich resources and, and going back to that storytelling there's there's lots of different groups um, I, I the fact that Michelle you know had commented being part of Archway who works in communities I know they've worked with uh, UGA uh, Elizabeth Davis who teaches a community writing course and I know they've actually helped do storytelling for communities to help identify. So, and it's not just UGA, obviously I'm being part of that, but you know, looking at our academic resources from Georgia Southern, College of Coastal Georgia, Savannah State, we're, we're fortunate that we, we do have those, those networks. Um, in terms of question two, we, we got into it, and the first thing we started talking about uh, the um, breweries and we're talking about the alcohol. Uh, Love my group. Uh, but one of the aspects we talked about were uh, uh, Cheryl mentioned about shrubs, which really was this idea of like bitters. Uh, that's been a great way of trying to promote um, some of our local um, uh, or local businesses that are promoting kind of that mixology. And really, uh, it's not just, hey, I'm going to go get a drink, but you're really, you know, uh, having an experience there. Um, and the connection with the tours, our distilleries, I think Cheryl, you did comment there is a winery in South Georgia, and I, I, I didn't get the name of it though. Watermelon Creek, maybe. And where is that at? 
I don't think I've heard. Okay. <laughs> Rab Rabbit Eye Winery makes their own blueberry wine too. Okay. And you can tour their facility the, at Bell Farm. Okay. Rabbit, Eye Winer Rabbit Eye Winery shop is on um, Newcastle in historic downtown Brunswick, Thank but you. they have their Bell Farm where they actually press the blueberries and make the, you can go to that. Cheryl said that place was in Guyton. Guyton, thank you so much for that. that um, yeah, and so I just, again, any else from our groups, anything else to add to, to what we just had the, with the discussion with mixology? I, I just wanted to emphasize overlaying the, um, the outdoor adventurer uh, with all the beautiful green space along the corridor that, you know, as they're traveling through, they move slower they um, get hungry and thirsty when they're out there recreating. And that actually is a great segue. Cheryl Hargrove last week, we talked about just different levels of outdoor recreation that, yeah, it's not all zip lines and, and you know, extreme that different speeds. So, to, you know, and so even connecting it with the food piece. Um, and then also, Tracy, you made that comment about Dave Zaleski doing currently filming Georgia Grown opportunities and Cheryl Smith did make a comment that, yeah, and I'll say on the seafood side, I know they have done oysters uh, and clams. They did one with Charlie Phillip. We're actually trying in the process of uh, helping him do one on jellyfish, uh, which is a Georgia commodity. And I know, I think he's got something in the works for blue crab. So a uh, cool opportunity to, to really further promote, you know, our seafood aspect of this. So Patrick, yeah, you had a question there, please. In. No, I was just reading the post-it board and I see it looks like you're looking at Gilliard Farms as a as a collaborator. That's Matthew Rayford. We right? Cheryl had oh, mentioned that. that. Okay. Uh -huh. So so Gilliard Farms has already um, agreed to be part of Highway 17. They I talked to Matthew. And the cool thing, I'm just connecting your little pieces there, is that his partner, Javon Sage, who has a company called Sage's Larder where she makes a lot of things from their farms with hibiscus flowers and things like that, actually creates and bottles her own shrubs. So they, they actually do that on that farm, which is already going to be a 17 member. So just tie it and that actually all works. <laughs> so that's yeah. good. And, and that's, and Patrick, to that point, yeah, it's interesting. We don't have to look far to some of these partnerships because another comment would just, you know, again, with, with Liberty County about blogs and stuff, I know, I, um, Patrick, you might know, I know Matthew does a blog, is it Jupiter's Ascent, he does a blog? Or uh, yeah, it, that, so Jupiter Gilliard was his great six times removed grandfather who started the farm, so that's that's where that comes from. Jupiter okay. Gilliard was the first, yeah, so yes. There's so a lot of a lot of cool opportunities. Yeah, I know that they, they, want, they were hoping to do something about oyster, oyster dressing for Thanksgiving, so I'm not sure when that will come out, but... Uh, a lot of, lot of really cool opportunities. I, I do want to open it up. Um, and first off, thank you to all of our note, make, note takers. So Courtney, Isaiah, and Trey, I, I, I really do appreciate that. And Sarah Lynn and Michelle and, and Sam for facilitating and uh, everyone else. But just any other comments or questions maybe from some of the, the points that have been brought up? All right, well, I will say, um, you know, I really appreciate everybody's uh, comments today, and we've had a lot of great links coming through uh, the chat, which we are, we've been capturing. So we, what we'll do is we'll summarize all these notes and get them back out, and these will come with the recording of the discussion. I did want to remind you that the breakout groups weren't uh, individually recorded, but when we, you know, the beginning part and then the, this discussion will be, and this will go with the recorded presentation that Cheryl gave as well. And uh, we have to, and, uh, what we'll do is Trey and his team will work on the closed captioning uh, and we'll get these back. But I do want to point out um, our last discussion uh, will be next Friday and it'll be on the third pillar we're uh, focusing on, which is African-American heritage and culture. Um, if you haven't already signed up, um, I just posted the link uh, to the, the page where we're trying to keep all this information. Um, Patrick did a great recorded uh, interview with Dion Hoskins Brown and Heather uh, with Savannah State and Noah Fisheries, but who's also a uh, chairwoman for the uh, Gullah Geechee uh, Heritage Corridor that Patrick mentioned, as well, there, as, well as Heather Hodges, who was the, the executive director of the corridor. And I think they really bring up some just wonderful points about collaboration and opportunities, uh, maybe for some future training. So I'm hoping everybody will be able to uh, try, uh, be able to sign up for that. Um, the last thing I was going to say is just like any of our programs, um, 
input is always welcomed. And so you will be getting a survey. Um, and particularly for us in, at UGA, this is something that, uh, you know, our bosses like to see, but uh, good, bad, or ugly, you know, we, we appreciate your input on how we can improve these because at the end of the day, we're trying to keep these discussions, the momentum going so that we can hopefully get in person uh, in April. Uh, and right now, I think we're tentatively looking at April 23rd at the Coastal Botanical Gardens. If we're allowed to meet in person, uh, if not, we'll uh, readapt and be flexible as uh, and resilient as someone else had mentioned earlier in the discussion. But um, again, I want to thank all of our partners, Cheryl Smith for presenting uh, and every one of you that uh, participated in our breakout groups. Uh, we really appreciate your input and hopefully now you can go uh, have lunch and maybe a drink uh, after having this discussion. So again, thank you for everyone. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.